Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The $20 billion Mozambique LNG project secured nearly $15 billion in debt financing last week. Sharon Screamer joins me to discuss this project milestone and what it means for South Africa and Mozambique. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. This is a true mega project. How has it reached this stage? Yes, as you say, the size and scale of this project is, is quite enormous. Uh, $20 billion, financing of nearly $15 billion. That's Africa's biggest ever financing deal. And uh, it really has come about because of the discovery of massive amounts of uh, natural gas offshore Mozambique in the Ravuma Basin. This is following exploration of many years. From about 2010, we started to hear about the size and scale of the Ravuma Basin gas resources. Uh, at that stage, Anadarko was leading a lot of the, the exploration, the American company. Uh, last year, in 2019, Anadarko sold its stake in the Mozambique Area 1 project, LNG project, to Total. And now Total is leading this mega project in northern Mozambique, which is on the Ufungi Peninsula in an area near Palma, which is the capital of the Cabo Delgado province uh, in northern Mozambique. It's proceeding despite rising conflict in the region and reduced demand for gas. Yes, it's, it's quite an amazing development that in July this year, with COVID-19 having really affected energy markets around the world, including the price and demand for natural gas, uh, that there's still such appetite for a project of this size and scale. And uh, also given what, as you say, a, a rising conflict in the area, this is an area that uh, borders Tanzania to the north. And there has been a, a, a sort of a, an insurgency that has international undertones. So the insurgents uh, are supported strongly by IS, Islamic State. And uh, there has been a rise in violence in and around this province and in and around this project site. And, it's been, uh, and this has been intensifying over the last number of years. And uh, despite Mozambican government bringing in uh, mercenaries, initially Russian mercenaries, now Southern African mercenaries, to try and quell this, uh, this uh, insurgency, uh, the violence continues. So those two components, the, the fall in gas demand and prices, as well as uh, this violence, there was uh, concern that maybe this big project was going to be affected and future projects uh, because of the size of the gas resource uh, this is not the only project earmarked for LNG in northern Mozambique. So the fact that this has gone ahead and that the financing was secured uh, uh, on the 15th of July with financial close to happen later in the year uh, is quite remarkable. What are the risks and opportunities for Mozambique and South African business from this project? Well, there's naturally a lot of opportunity for Mozambique. This is a game-changing uh, project for Mozambique. Uh, Mozambique's gross uh, domestic product is around $15 billion. So if you think just the financing, the debt financing alone, that's coming in to support uh, this project from uh, six um, export credit agencies, nearly 20 banks and development finance institutions, that's $14.9 billion. It's the size of Mozambique's gross domestic product, yearly gross domestic product. The capital project's over $20 billion. So that's bigger than uh, uh, Mozambique's gross domestic product currently. So potentially a game changer for the Mozambican economy. But because of the conflict, I think the big risk here is that it could be an unclaving, there could be an unclaving around the project where logistics is very much done through, uh, through the sea and through air. And that the, the hinterland that should be the real beneficiaries and the Mozambican people don't benefit from the spinovers, uh, from the infrastructure spinovers, from the business opportunity spinovers uh, into the hinterland. And that it becomes an enclave where it's really the financiers and the energy companies and their customers in Europe and Asia are the main beneficiaries. So that is the risk, I think, for Mozambique. For South Africa, I think the risk is not understanding the size and scale of this uh, investment. I think there's been a lot of skepticism about it. We've been speaking about Mozambique gas for over a decade. Now it's really starting to happen. The business opportunities around uh, this mega project are massive. We need to build a whole city 
uh, townships, uh, infrastructure, water. People need to be fed and entertained. So it's a whole new uh, city that's going to arise in a very remote location of Africa. This is far from South Africa. We must understand it's if we were to run a pipeline down from uh, from uh, Cabo Delgado all the way down to South Africa, it's almost like running a pipeline from London to Casablanca. So it's not right on our doorstep, but it is our neighbour. We do have good links both with Mozambique and with the energy in, uh, infrastructure projects in southern Mozambique. We know that we already import gas uh, into South Africa from the Sassel uh, projects down in the south uh, through a pipeline called Romco. So there are opportunities for South African business, but uh, those opportunities can only be exploited if you have boots on the ground and a presence on the ground and partners on the ground. So there is that risk of missing out because in a world that's hungry for business opportunity post-COVID, uh, we're not going to be the only ones looking to scramble for these opportunities. We know our engineering and logistics and infrastructure companies have been project starved given the very, very poor state of our economy and our project economy. So this is an opportunity. So I think this threat for South Africa is missing out and also linking this gas into our own energy transition. There's an opportunity here to have almost a milk run of gas down from the northern Mozambique to say the Maputo port and inject that uh, into, the, uh, into the pipeline that already exists and maybe expand that pipeline. Because as we expand our renewable energy penetration, we're going to need flexible generators to, to complement that. And one of those flexible generators in the near term, one of the most cost effective is going to be gas. Obviously over time, other flexible generation solutions will come in the form of battery storage and other uh, uh, flexibility options. But in the near, uh, in the sort of uh, near horizon, gas is a big opportunity to complement renewables. And we know that Eskom's got the big repurposing plan for uh, its power stations uh, on, uh, on the eastern side of South Africa. And there's gas infrastructure really flowing into that area. So there is an opportunity for South Africa and we need to be a bit more alert to it. I think the, the response to the announcement that the project is really now real and that there's financing for it has been quite muted in South Africa. So I think we need to become more alive and more awake to the opportunity. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.